Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Boscherini. And for our unit on exploring contact and non-contact forces, today we're going to see what are magnetic fields. So the title of this lesson will be Understanding Magnetic Fields. The purpose of today's lesson will be to be able to describe magnetic fields, uh, to explore the field around the magnet, and I'm going to show you a few demonstrations on how to do that. And at the end, we will be able to explain the shape, the size, and the direction of magnetic field. The Northern Lights. Most of you have heard about them. Maybe a few fortunate of you have actually seen them in real life. But what are they? Uh, and why do we see them only in some regions of our planet? Uh, first of all, you know that the uh, technical name, the real name of Northern Lights is actually Aurora Borealis, where Borealis refers to the Northern Hemisphere. And you might know that this is a light show, so to speak, that is visible if you go way, way up north, um, for instance, in the northern parts of Scandinavia, so the up, upmost parts of Sweden, Norway and Finland, um, in um, the northern part of Canada, Alaska, uh, Greenland, okay? So we're talking about places with a very low density of population. But an interesting fact is northern lights are not only no in the northern hemisphere. Uh, there is actually the aurora australis, so the correspondent to the southern hemisphere. The point is, uh, as you probably know from your geography lessons, uh, that the southern hemisphere has less land mass, and that is mostly uh, evident uh, if you go way down south towards the pole, where you the only big land mass is Antarctica, which, apart from a few researches, is completely devoid of inhabitants. So this is why, when we think about um, uh, the auroras, we think about the Northern Lights. Okay. Now, why do they happen? Uh, just to uh, spoil a little bit, your the answer to this, of course, has has to do with magnets. But let's see how we can see the force around a magnet. In a previous lesson, we have introduced magnetism as a non-contact force. That is, a force that doesn't need the objects to touch themselves in order to feel it, like when you kick a ball or you, or you throw something, okay, you lift a bag, okay, those are contact forces. A non-contact force is a force that acts at a distance, like gravity. So, uh, if I take a bar magnet, like those I've shown you in uh, my previous video, you know that if I place um, some objects, uh, and more specifically objects made of either iron or cobalt or nickel steel, they will get attracted huh? if you place them at um, a convenient distance, okay? And the distance, of course, will depend on the strength of our magnet. So that means there is a force applied by this magnet. The question is, how can we see that force? Since it's, it's a non-contact force, it happens at a distance, is there a way of visualizing this force uh, to tell uh, in which direction is this force uh, acting? Uh, where is it stronger? Where is it, where is it weaker? Now, in the next, se next segment of this video, I'm going to show you a demonstration on how to visualize the force around the magnet. Okay, so this is a compass. It's an object you've already seen before. And as you know, a compass is an object that helps you find the north. In this case, you see that the arrow is pointing in this direction. This tells you that north is in that direction. But why? What makes a compass work? This is exactly what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about magnetic fields. And just as a, to, to, to explore this, here I have a bar magnet, like those we saw pre um, in previous lessons. And as you can see, by placing, for instance, this pole, 
of our bar magnet, you see this affects our compass. Huh? And you can see the south seeking end of your compass is pointing towards the North Pole. And if I turn it around, this is what I will get. Okay? Now, and once I remove a magnet, it will eventually go back to normal. So, we already saw that magnets apply a non-contact force. Huh? And this non-contact force is normally invisible. What we're going to do today, we're going to make this force visible. Because what we're going to visualize is a region around our magnet where we can feel the magnetic force. And we're going to, talk, we're going to uh, call this region the magnetic field. In order to do that, there are many ways you can do that. Um, one way is by placing two books side by side to a bar magnet. Then we will place a thin sheet of paper on top of it. And then we're going to use these things here. These are called iron filings or iron shavings. And basically, uh, they look like uh, let me show you before we start our demonstration. We look pretty much like pepper, okay? Like grains of pepper. But don't be fooled, these are actually very small shards of metal, okay? So we actually have to use some precautions in using um, iron filings. Normally, if we were going to do this in a classroom, I will have you wear gloves. Wear, uh, wear eye protection, okay? We're not, no need to do that because this is just a demonstration. But now we're going to see uh, what we can do with these iron filings, okay? So let's place again our magnet at the center of the screen, okay, like that. And then we put again our piece of paper on top of it. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the iron filings on top of a paper. And let's see what happens. And you might already see there's a pattern forming. Okay, let's stop it here. First of all, what do you see? Do you see very clearly the outline of our bar magnet? Okay, not only, you might already see that there's some sort of lines forming like those arcs going from here to here and then these sort of other lines going up here and if I put more of these iron filings. By the way, you can see that especially near the poles, the iron filings get attracted to the end, so this, they accumulate, and if you were able to see it sideways, you see those filings actually sticking out, okay? So let's add a little more here, okay? Okay, so what we see here is what we call the magnetic field of our bar magnet. Actually, it extends indefinitely around, but this is the region where we feel it more. And not only, you can see that despite me having sort of randomly distributed our iron filings, they tend to concentrate in some areas, and namely near the poles. But we, th this shouldn't come as a surprise. We already know that the poles is where the magnetic force is stronger, okay? I'm going to pause our video for now, but in a few seconds we're going to see how we can visualize in a different way the field around the magnet. Okay, so we have the same setup as before. So we have the two books and the magnet sitting here in the middle and a thin sheet of paper on top. And another way of visualizing the field from a magnet is 
by using a compass. These small compasses are called plotting compasses, okay, so a little bit different from those you've seen before. And what you can see is that as I get closer to the pole, they start to move. And if I move it, you can see the arrow start, starts to follow that kind of arc we saw before, no? And here I'm closer to the pole. You see how now it sticks out like this. And then again, if I move it across, it follows that kind of arc. You see it? You see how the arrow starts changing its direction. So, to recap, we have two ways, very easy ways to visualize the field uh, around the magnet. One is by using iron filings and one is by using a plotting, comp um, a plotting compass. Our next step we'll see, will be to see how we can visualize the field around two magnets. So, now we can define what is the magnetic field of a magnet. So, we're going to say that the magnetic field is a region around a magnet where the magnetic force is felt. And we saw which shape this, mag this magnetic field has. So, we take our bar magnet, we saw that on the sides of a bar magnet, we have these lines. We call these magnetic field lines. So, let, let's 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 label them okay so these are magnetic field lines okay they tell you the direction of the force so if you place um something for instance here it will feel a force which goes in this direction okay now or in the other depends uh what kind of object we're talking about okay um now not only they tell you the direction of a force but the density so the number of magnetic field lines tells you the strength of a force and uh, we saw that uh, with that with the um iron filings they tend to concentrate near the ends of a magnet what we call the poles and we see it again here now we see that this region has way more uh, magnetic field lines than, for instance, here. No, we have two regions of the same size, but here have way more lines. So that means that here, uh, so here, I have a stronger force. So uh, density, density of lines is an indication of the strength of a field, the strength of your force, okay? Having said this, in the next segment of this video, we're going to see some demonstrations on what happens if instead of only one bar magnet, we have two bar magnets side by side. What happens to the magnetic field lines around these two bar magnets.